Hi there. Welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. So glad you're there to join us today. So very thankful that we can connect this way of talk about the good things of God and the good things that need to be in your home about the Lord and make him the center of your home and it'll sure make things different. So if you're brand new, that's what we're all about and welcome. And I have a return guest today. I am just downright excited to have her back. Her name is Janet Perez Eccles. And it's been quite a while since she was on the program, but she became blind at the age of 31. Now, think about that. I always think the 30s are just, just the best. Uh, if I had to choose an age in you know, a bracket that I'd like to be back in, that would be it. This woman is amazing. I do not have the words to describe how she has adapted and what a blessing she is. Uh, all you church leaders kind of perk up your ears because she would be a great speaker for your church. She's an author, an overcomer, and so much more, but I'll let her tell you about it. We are going to talk about her new 30-day devotional book, Contagious Courage. And I told her, I just love this book, and we'll tell you why when she comes to join me. And listen to this. I'm going to join Stephanie for Greek chicken burgers with cucumber sauce. This is a very, very healthy recipe. Some of you have been asking for more healthy things. This is one of them. Uh, before I join Stephanie, though, I want to ask, thank you and ask you uh, for support for the program. Thank you so much for those who give. God bless you for that. You realize what an important program this is for the, for the nation, really. And I'm thankful that when the Lord touches your heart, you give. The information is coming up on your screen. You can call our 800 number if you would like to do it right away, uh, which is a good idea. 1-800-229-0059. And also our location is Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I've joined Stephanie over here. Uh, this is from a, a diabetic, diabetic uh, mm -hmm. cookbook. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have enjoyed some of the cookbooks that I've gathered together because people have limited things they can eat, but you can really make them good. Yes. Oh, they so really good. And really this. Good smells so good. I'm super excited about this one. The cucumber yogurt sauce is tzatziki sauce, mm -hmm. is what it is. And it smells just like the one we got from the restaurant. So and I'm, both she and Brooke knew what that was. Yes, I didn't. I'm super excited. So I can't wait to try this. So you have mm -hmm. uh, two, uh, I'm sorry, a half a cup and two tablespoons of plain nonfat Greek yogurt. Mm -hmm. You have a half a medium cucumber, peel, seeded, and finely chopped, which you did an amazing job. Oh. You have the juice of a half a lemon. You have three, gar you have two garlic cloves because I have the other one. You have two teaspoons of finely chipped, yeah, chopped fresh <laughs> mint. And you have salt. I'm and we're supposed to have white pepper, out. but we don't have white pepper, so we, we didn't put it in. So you're mixing all of that, okay? And there's just as much stuff that goes in the chicken. And then I have ground chicken, and I have feta. I have three ounces of feta, four Kalamata olives that I chopped up, which I don't like olives, but I don't even you know, care in this one. You know, overall, Greek food is very... So tasty. Well, that, but it's very healthy. Yeah. Here's an egg. I have one clove of chopped garlic, which I still smell like garlic since I chopped it this morning. They would call uh, anything on a Mediterranean diet, I think they consider very healthy. Yeah, and a half a teaspoon of oregano, dried oregano. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to get this mixed up and make it into patties. And I'll remind you, it's a chicken burger. Yes, chicken. It's And it's very good for you. All of this is so mm -hmm. good for you. So I will just mix this up. I'll make four patties out of it, and I'll cook them up. And then do you want to show how beautiful they are? These, these would be um, good on your outside grill. Yes, so good. Everything's good on the outside grill, though. I mm -hmm. love cooking on the grill. Look at those. I cook on our grill quite often. Well, I probably would if I had a man around the house, but <laughs> me living by myself, you think I'd get a grill out? I don't uh, think so. My grill's out all the time, so I think if even if I didn't have yeah. a man around, I would. Go ahead and put some of those in. Okay. We'll put the sauce on it. Taste okay. It. And then get me the good sauce that, w that we made earlier. Okay. Yeah, because yes, that... this is 
This has had, had more time to, to marinate. Yes. Get all the ingredients acquainted. Yeah. I'm just going to put one in there. Yeah. So I can taste. And about how many minutes on each side? Yes, that many. Till I think done. raw chicken <laughs> is about the nastiest. <laughs> Make sure it's done. This is not a medium rare burger. This is a done burger, okay? Have you ever heard of medium or rare chicken? I don't oh, think so. Oh, I've seen so. pictures and it's gross. Do people eat it? Ten like minutes that? on each side. Mm, yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay. Susan said ten minutes on each okay. side. Okay. This is also going to be my lunch today. I haven't eaten today, so. Well, I'm has uh, has our boss? Of course eaten? he's eaten. Of course he's eaten. I make sure he's fed. Well, I was going to tell you to okay. take one up to him. Here we go. Oh, there look, go. the steam is coming off of it. Uh -huh. This is going to be delicious. Mm -hmm. There are no <laughs> words. <laughs> For that burger. That All is right. so delicious. Okay. All right. That's a 10. A 10. Maybe an 11. That's going in the next cookbook. Guaranteed. Yes. Okay, good. For sure. Uh, and as you saw, this had a lot of ingredients, and that's what makes things good. That's a good chef has a lot of ingredients. I mean, so. I had a few. But it's worth it. So worth it. Yes. So good. If you want this recipe... The information's coming right up on your screen. You choose the way you want it, and we will get it to you. And then uh, if you haven't met Janet, you are in for a real treat. So stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, Janet, I'm so glad you're back. What well, joy to be with you again. Thank you. I'd have to say you're a favorite guest for sure. <gasps> wow, how sweet. Yes. I think um, one reason, and you know this as well as I do, that Christians have different levels of joy. <laughs> some have none. <laughs> yeah, I met some of those. <laughs> and you uh, kind of are over the top, and you prove that. Christ's joy doesn't depend on circumstances. So true, absolutely. Yeah, I want you to tell your story. Um, you've been on before, but we have new viewers every day, so yes. uh, it's an amazing story. Just feel free to tell it the way you do when you go out and speak. The way I do it, okay. Well, here's, here's what I want to get across today in view of what was going, what's going on in the world, and that is I came to find out that the joy that I have has nothing to do with my circumstance. I learned that lesson the, wrong, the hard way because when I was 30, I was a happy mom of three little boys. My husband and I were doing well in every aspect. It was like a dream come true for me until the day that my world began to fall apart. And the disease of the retina, hereditary, I got it from my father, it began to rub my sight. How long does that take to rub your sight? In, in my, it, it, it varies with everybody, but in my case, it matter 18 months. It took my sight away completely. Wow. No shadows, no colors. So when people ask me, are you legally blind? I say, no, I, it should be illegal to be as blind as I am because <laughs> I don't have any sight at all. So, and it was devastating for me because at the time, and even now, there was no surgery, medication, there was no treatment. So what that meant, Arlene, is that the rest of my life, I'd be facing total darkness. See, I wasn't prepared for that. I wasn't ready, and I didn't think mm. I deserved that. In the midst of that trauma, my husband couldn't handle it. He was also young. He wasn't prepared for something like this. And he came home one day and said that he found somebody else. So there I was, totally destroyed emotionally in physical and emotional darkness. Actually, phys spiritual mm -hmm. darkness as well, because I didn't really have that conviction of who I was in the Lord. I thought that my success and victory an image was that woman who could see, who was active, was able to do things just like normal people, right? Right. That's where I thought I was. But I want to ask you, uh, was there a point when you got over the devastation, said, well, I've got to live, so I've got to learn some things? Because basically there's nothing you can't do. You do your own hair, don't you? And I do. My makeup. makeup. My, yeah. And I have seen a video of you cooking in the kitchen, and you're yeah. picking up knives and things. and. Yeah. Uh, how did you learn that at that age? 
Well, I came to a point I think with either either I would sink in depression and self pity and and stop my life, right? Because of my blindness. But I had my three little boys to take care of. My husband wasn't really around anymore and I had to do that. So it was that sense of who is going to do this for me. There was no one else. But what gave me the strength and gave me the wisdom and the courage to do that was when I visited a church, a Christian church. And that's where I learned the guide, the path, the order for my priorities. And that was in the verse Matthew, Matthew 6, 33 that says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, mm -hmm. and all these things shall be added unto you. Well, what I was thinking first, I wanted to see again. I wanted to be normal. I wanted my marriage to be like it was before. Mm -hmm. That was number one. And I think a lot of people are there, or don't you think right now they're mm -hmm. just seeking for answers right. There's so much turmoil and uh, you don't have the solution. You can't see what's tomorrow, what tomorrow will bring. And that's where I was. But when God said, seek me first, everything changed. Uh, I wish you could see your own smile because it <laughs> lights up the room. Oh. Uh, were you a Christian when this happened? No. I'd gone to wow. church every single Sunday all my life, mm -hmm. but I really didn't have, I had a religion. I was a very religious little girl. I obeyed, mm -hmm. obeyed all mm -hmm. the rituals, but when this trauma came into my life is when I literally, with the eyes of my heart, saw who Jesus was, what he said, what he promised, what he expected of me, and what he would do for me. And I had never known that before. So as I got a, a Bible and audio, I would listen to it day in, day out, and that's when I did a crazy thing. You know what I did? Well, I began to believe what God was telling me. I think we just hit it. <laughs> yes, right, right. So when he said, my word will be a lamp to your feet and a light for your path, he was talking to me. In the midst of my darkness, I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know where I was going to go, who was going to help me. He was saying, I will light your path. What a message for all of us today, right? Amen. Absolutely. Now, you had three little boys. Yes. And how old were they? Three, five, and seven years old. And how did you navigate that? How did you learn how to get around your house? Well, and I how did you change a diaper or anything like that? Actually, my youngest was just potty trained. Thank goodness, right? But even, that wouldn't have stopped me because I changed my grandkids' uh, diapers when they were little. I changed it by myself, no problem at all. I think I could have then too. But my boys were, were already potty trained, so that wasn't an issue. What was an issue is that when they would fight or they got hurt and they needed me, I couldn't really run to them. You know, I had to navigate through the house. But what I did with my boys is I learned, I taught them the value of sense of humor. So they would play tricks on me and I would laugh with them. Oh my so word. So I didn't want to think, oh, my mom is blind, poor me. And so it, it was an attitude that I developed, an attitude of confidence, of reassurance, and of security in who I was. I wasn't identified by my blindness, but I was a daughter of the king who had plans for my life, as he said. So, and that's, just, that's what, I, of course, I had to learn how to cook all over again, how to clean the house, how to do laundry, figure out how to mark their little shirts because they were close and size was, their sizes were close to one another. But I would put a little staple in the label of one of them and two in the other so I knew who it belonged to. So you kind of figured it out yourself? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. People said, oh, you know, you need to do some rehab training at home uh -huh. where someone comes and teaches. And I said, ah, I don't have time for that. I got my little boys to take care of. I don't have time to take classes. So I pretty much learned everything on, on my own with God's help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, to go blind at that age is huge. There's, there's no way to quantify it. But that wasn't the only big hit you got. No, no, it wasn't. I mean, years later... Once I became adjusted to my life without sight, and by the way, God restored our marriage and it lasted for 42 years. But through that time, I had gotten such a close, intimate relationship with the Lord that my life was really rich in every aspect, spiritual, emotional. But the day came where my faith was going to be tested again with something much more mm -hmm. traumatic, as you say, and that was when we received a phone call telling us that our 19-year-old son was wounded. Now, Joe was captain of the football team. He was a leader in every way. He was handsome. He was witty. Always attended his Bible study classes. And to find out that he was wounded, it was something we couldn't believe. 
So we went to the emergency room and waited and waited. And finally, the doctors walked in. They said, are you the parents of Joe Eccles? And yes, I jumped to my feet. I said, where is he? You know, how is he? When can we take him home? What happened to him? And that's when he told us that he had not survived the 23 stab wounds he had received. He was murdered. Right? Yes. Yes, he was murdered. And so at that time, I think I thought, these things don't happen to good people. Mm -hmm. Why would that happen to us, to me, to my son, my baby boy, even though he was 19, he was still my baby. But in the midst of that agony and that anguish, I heard God's voice, not audibly, but I heard him say to my heart, be still and know that I am God. So what he was telling me is, I know what you're going through, but I'm still the same God who will help you, will strengthen you, and bring back that peace. And I, once again, believed in what he said, because I didn't know where else I was going to be able to the pieces up again or how or how I was going to live the rest of my life with such heartache and I know Arlene right now many people are facing that you know many people have lost loved ones to the virus and lost jobs lost their security and mm -hmm. God is saying the same thing right. to them I'm still God so but you went a step further you forgave well yes a year later the man who killed him was processed in, in courtroom in a court of law but at the end of the trial, the verdict was ready, and I thought, finally, we're going to see punishment. He's going to be, you know, reserve the, punish, reserve the, the punishment he really deserves after doing that. But the verdict read, it said, we find the defendant not guilty of all counts. What in the world did you feel at that moment? Well, we were stunned. I, we, we just couldn't believe it because it was, it was, the evidence was there. What happens is, you know, in the state of Florida, there's a law that says if you feel your life is threatened, you're justified to kill the other person. The man had pled self-defense, and oh. the jury found him not guilty. He had stabbed my Joe 23 times, Joe's friend seven times. His friend survived, but not my Joe. So we went home trying to pick the pieces up all over again, thinking, how can this ever happen nowadays? So after praying and praying and trying to to ask God to give us back that peace that we just could not understand, that injustice. The answer came finally one day. And the answer was, is that what we needed to do is forgive. It was so clear, Linda. It was almost like God was saying, I have the answer. I have the freedom for you. So we chose to completely, genuinely, and totally forgive the man who killed our son. That's when we were set free. See, that's... That's not natural. That's supernatural. It is. You can it only is. do it. I want to uh, address the viewers. If you just joined us, I'm talking to Janet Perez Eccles. Um, we told the top show she's completely blind, has an unbelievable life, raised her three sons for most part in that condition. We have the website on the screen right now. And I'm sure that there are church leaders watching I have seen some of the, uh, some video of some of her speaking. Let me tell you, you want her in your church. You want her, uh, for your ladies to hear her. She speaks with great authority, and she knows the Lord, and it is sound stuff. I think one difference, you really live this, and a lot of Christians don't. When, when, I, when I see your level of joy and your overcoming the bible says we're overcomers and uh i would just print that on your dress <laughs> uh you you're exhibit a for overcoming wow well you know i think right now we have a choice to sink into the problem as i always say or step into god's promise and i don't think god wants us just to endure and survive he wants us to thrive he wants us to live that abundant life but he never said only if everything works out, right? Mm -hmm. He said, I will give you that joy no matter what happens, no matter what mm -hmm. the situation is. And he did that with me. So what a privilege it is to, for me to share that message and to stand there as proof, I guess, right? I'm telling you that if you hear her, um, you'll be changed. I'll say that. Let your, let your people at church hear her and, and uh, they'll be changed. Now, she's written several books. This is the newest one, Contagious Courage. And it's a 30 or 31 day devotional. Right. 30, 30 day devotional. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to describe it? It's different than any I've ever read. And I have told him I'm a connoisseur of devotionals. Yes. Let me tell you, I, I read a lot of them. Thank uh, you. But this one 
has just a little bit of a program to it. Do you want to describe it? Sure. You know what I did with this book? I wrote it in a way that I would want to read something with engaging stories, a powerful message, but simple, practical steps to follow. Mm -hmm. So I give a story, application, a scripture reading. But you know what I did? I included a portion there where you need to declare out loud the mm -hmm. truth of God in your situation. There's so much power in how you speak out what you want to happen. Uh, for example, if there's, as, you know, we're succumbing with fear right now. So one of the devotions would talk about a time when I was fearful, traveling by myself for the first time across the country and other countries. How did I overcome that? So I tell a little bit of story about that scenario. But then the declaration that you have to say is declare God's word. The Lord is the strong for my life. Whom shall I fear? He's the one who guides me. Of whom shall I be afraid? So yeah, where'd you get the idea it? of speaking it out? That is so, that is so good. It's so beneficial. Yes. Well, you, you sometimes you've heard people say, oh, I'm so stupid. I can't believe this. A friend of mine recently told yeah. me. She said, you declare it. <laughs> you declare it. And declare you know, your stupidity. Yeah. That's, that's great. And those <laughs> words, your spirit receives it. And it manifests in your life. If you say you're going crazy, you probably will. Mm -hmm. So for you, to, the Bible says, the power of life and death is in the tongue. Mm -hmm. So many times I, you know, I'm, I'm looking for something. Of course, I can't find it by looking at it like a sighted person would. And I could be thinking, oh, I'm so dumb. Oh, I hate being blind. I don't say that thing. It's going to take me a little bit longer, but I know I'm going to find it. Mm -hmm. Or my hubby's going to find it for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so words that edify, that encourage, that align with God's truth, that's the secret. And something about speaking it, you hear your own voice. Yes. And it validates it. That's true. So true. And our kids are listening. You know, sometimes we, we moms are saying, oh, that was so stupid. I can't believe I'm so stupid. What do you think kids are going to grow up saying, right? That's exactly right. That's yeah. good. Yeah. So, yes. And then so the give us the uh, pecking order in this book. Okay. It, do you give the subject first and then the scripture? Yes, there's or? a title. Mm -hmm. Like one of the titles. It has a be, specific subject. Yes, it does. For example, one of them is, uh, the title is, I'm a fake. And that's when a friend of mine told me, and she said, Janet, you know, I don't believe you. I think you're really a fake. You really can see because you can do everything yourself, oh. right? <laughs> and sometimes that, that's you what You fool them. <laughs> yeah, I fool them, right? They tell me that all the time. So my point there is sometimes we do live a life that's really not genuine. We like to put on a front or a mask, but God is seeking for us to be real with him. When we're real with him, he can really try do work with us and take us up to that level where we can have that confidence and we will portray it. We no longer have to be fake, right? Because I really right. can't fake my joy. It has to come from within. And uh, it also has a scripture and a prayer, yes, right? Yes, there's a scripture that aligns with that truth. There's a prayer and then there's a declaration that you have to say and repeat it to yourself. Some people said, they wrote me and they said, I put that on my mirror, you know, that declaration. So I repeat it all the time and th that's really helped them because they were growing all these years with that recording that was negative, that was uh, emphasizing their flaws or their failures or weaknesses. But when they speak their strength along mm -hmm. with God's word, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. Is this your fourth book? Yes, this is my fourth. My and uh, you'll find all the books uh, on the website. Also... I took one semester of Spanish, and that was it. Uh oh <laughs> um, But she speaks perfect Spanish, and so there's probably a lot of churches there that could yes. use you. Yes, I do speak to English and Spanish-speaking audiences, because Spanish is my native language. Mm -hmm. I have to learn you you were born English. in Bolivia? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I was born in Bolivia, and I had to learn to speak English once I got here. My father made that rule, mm -hmm. you know, so we had to learn to speak it. Mm -hmm. quickly and fast and well, so we did. Mm -hmm. yeah. as, um, as you've progressed and look back, could you say your blindness was a blessing? That's a good question. People, when I've said that it was, people say to me, wait a minute, God doesn't want you to look blind. Where's your faith? But let's say, I lived my life like I was when I was sighted. I would be that young woman with an empty place in my heart looking for fulfillment, for joy, and for peace and confidence in the wrong places. So losing my eyesight physically opened my spiritual eyes so that I could learn to live that rich life that sees beyond what the world sees. So in many ways, I think 
yeah, my blindness has pretty much a blessing because once I lost my sight is when God started opening up doors. I began a, an award-winning career as a Spanish interpreter. I began to write books, to travel. I think if I could see, I'd probably be home just watching my favorite programs at night and going out to dinner, and that'd be it, you know? Wow. So, yeah. What a good... Now, that doesn't mean I wouldn't accept it. God would choose to heal my, my eyes and, mm. and bring back my eyes. That, that'd be another book, right? Have there been Christians uh, who really wanted to pray for you to restore your sight? All the time. Mm -hmm. All the time, yes. And, and they think that it's a lack of faith that yes. you do not see physically. In fact, one of them said, well, we need to have a session to find out why is it that what's keeping you from wanting to be healed? And, you know, mm -hmm. and I think, well, I don't know. You don't have to ask God that, mm -hmm. right? Um, for me... I don't see myself as blind. Mm -hmm. I never do. I never think, oh, that's right. I wake up in the morning. Well, where's the bathroom? Mm -hmm. I don't think of that. I think, oh, I got to write this blog. I got to prepare this presentation. I got to work on this editing for a book or whatever, or whatever needs to be done. So I guess if I started to think, I guess I can't see. I have to remind myself. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Well, basically, I wonder if you've made a list of things that you can't do. You know, you can't drive. I can't drive but, a but, truck. But most <laughs> everything that needs to be done, you can do it. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, pretty much, really, because I operate the computer with a voice synthesizer. I, it reads me the screen so I can write and read, open emails. Uh, yes, I travel by myself across the country, other countries. And I, I know you cook. Myself. I've seen film, film uh, of you yes, cooking. Yes, I cook. But those are my own recipes, though. Because yeah. <laughs> I don't like to waste time reading the recipe, you see. So I make them out. Now, my recipes have three, three criteria. They have to be delicious, nutritious, and so simple to prepare that you can do it with your eyes closed. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Oh, we, we are just about out of time, but what a delight you are. Thank you. You know, when you come in the room, the light, the light uh, come on. Thanks. You light it up. Oh, isn't I, that true, I, Brooke? Well, yeah. Yeah. you're sweet. We have one real quick story. Do we have time? Uh, we got about 30 seconds. No, okay. we don't. We don't. Oh, shoot. So, okay. That's you'll okay. be back. You'll okay, be back. we'll come back. You'll be back yes. uh, for Yay. sure. Don't forget Contagious Courage. We have had the website up there. It's also on Amazon, maybe? Oh, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. Amazon. Yes, yes. I highly recommend it. And like she said, it's uh, 30, 30 different. De yeah, devotionals. Mm -hmm. And How um, stress. so it's good just to repeat it. Just repeat it uh, the next month and so forth. Yeah. But we really enjoyed you coming back. You're just such a bundle of energy. <laughs> and thank, thank you, friend. You're our friend. Thank you, all you wonderful viewers. And don't forget, there's no higher calling than that one. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on 